Hello, everybody. This is Cody Bateman. Welcome to a brand new episode of our Relationship Marketing Podcast. Uh, we've got the best of the best on the show today, the one and only Nancy Lieberman. How are you doing, my friend? I'm wonderful. It's good to see you again, and I hope you and the family are doing well. Well, we, we're, we're doing well, and we hope you and your family's doing well as, as well. And for those of you, our listeners, who don't know who Nancy is, just, just Google Nancy Lieberman. That's all I got to say. Just, just, just take <laughs> two seconds and Google Nancy Lieberman. Uh, the who's who of the, of the basketball world is Nancy Lieberman. I mean, her list of accomplishments. I mean, I, it would take the whole show seriously. It would take the whole show to, to, to read off the list of the accomplishments. I, I think one of the biggest things, you know, uh, she's in the uh, Nesmith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Um, youngest uh, basketball player in Olympic history to silver medal in the 1976 uh, Summer Olympics. Um, she's, you know, she was the oldest, oldest player in the WNBA at the age of 50. That's got to be a record of some kind, right? Like that's the oldest, probably the oldest player in any professional sport, wouldn't it be? It's crazy, but uh, I don't know about other sports, but I got through it, so it was good. <laughs> well, it's really, I mean, these are just some of the, the main accomplishments. I, I think one of the coolest things is you've, you've really uh, lived very well in a male-dominant sport. Uh, in fact, you talk a lot about living 35 years in a, in a very much a male-dominant world in professional basketball. And you've, uh, you know, assistant coach for an uh, uh, NBA team, assistant Sacramento coach Kings. for Sacramento Kings. Uh, you're a commentator currently for uh, which team? New Orleans Pelicans. New Orleans Pelicans. So I so on all the time. Yeah, so she's on there. All the the, the latest uh, three on three tournaments. You were like coach of the year of this is all men's basketball. Well, the, the, big, the big three is former NBA players that are 38, 39, 40. And Ice Cube, uh, the entertainer, the rapper, the mogul, uh, he started the big three uh, for the next step of somebody's career. And then, you know, Dr. J coaches in that league and Michael Cooper and Gary Payton, Rick Barry. I mean, a ton of Hall of Famers. And I was very honored that he would ask me to be a coach. And the only thing I knew to do was to reward him with our team winning the championship, which we were very fortunate uh, two years ago. I remember um, we, we talked a little while before my next door neighbor was Jerry Sloan before he passed away. And you were, you were good friends with Jerry Sloan growing up and Frank Layden. Those are the Utah Jazz, um, who's who of the Utah Jazz way back in the day. But uh, recently after Jerry Sloan's passing, they had a memorial service for him in his backyard. So his second wife, um, uh, her name is Tammy. She held this memorial service in her backyard. And I remember talking to you because we saw all the players and coaches and owners and people showing up. And you knew all of them, like, you know, know all of these people, you know, Thurl Bailey and David Robinson and, you know, all these players that were in there. And it, it's just, it, it's amazing to talk with people on your level. You know, these are highly acclaimed, highly successful people in a very fast paced where the whole world's viewing you, looking at you, analyzing you, critiquing you every step of the way and these athletes and coaches and whatnot many have gone on to have success in this super high pressure everybody's looking at you world and you were one of those you are one of those it's where weird. in this in this high profile high pressure world you're able to manage through successfully when you and think I, about it Cody, in the NBA, if you're a head coach, there's only 30 head coaches in the world. It, as an assistant coach, there's only maybe six or eight assistant coaches per team. It's not a lot. So uh, in, in the, the big three, there's only 12 teams. You're one of 12 head coaches in the world coaching NBA players. So 
and, and you know everybody wants your job. Whether I'm doing TV or working with, with Sindel Court, I know everybody wants my job. So I'm keenly aware that I have to make sure that I, I bring it and I work hard and I do my, do my work because I want to be, I want to be better. So listening to the one and only Nancy Lieberman, this is a person that brings it. You've been bringing it your entire career, uh, even way back in the beginning days. Uh, you've you've always brought you've always brought it at a very high level. And I think one of the first questions I want to ask you is, how do you stay consistent at bringing it, as you would say, at a high level? Be because cons- you have to, you can't you can't just do it sometimes and not sometimes. You have to bring it all the time. And I think, I think- that, yeah. How do how do you maintain that i think people would be surprised that um it would probably shock people how you have to create uh, an everyday discipline of what you're trying to do and from the time i was 15 years old and trying out for the usa team as a high school junior and then the olympic team as a senior in high school you're playing against the best of the best so you have to be you, you have to be patient you have to be disciplined in, in what you do. You have to have qualities of success, in my opinion. Um, and you have to have, you know, some people have will and some people have skill. And some people are just flat out lazy mm-hmm. and they don't show up and they don't work hard or they just want a paycheck. And then that separates you. And I've had these discussions with LeBron. I've had these discussions with Michael Jordan and Kobe when he was around, you, you have to want to figure out how to be that best version of yourself. And if you can, you're going to be uber successful and you're going to influence a lot of people that are around you. Because people are watching you every single day, you know, as the, the CEO, the, you know, uh, of this incredible company and your McCabe Avenue foundation. So even though I walk out of my house every day, I know people have cell phones. I know they have recorders. I watch what I say in public because I might be talking to an NBA player. I might be talking to Zion or somebody and somebody is leaning over and capturing what I'm saying. And then they put it out on the internet, which is, you know, it's, it's beautiful, but it's also um, a curse in my opinion. For sure. And um, you know, it's done a lot of damage to our world but it's also allowed us to communicate um, and everybody feels, you know, that they have relevancy, which which is fine, but, you know, partnership and patience and quality, a competitive spirit. uh, I really have always believed those are the the ultimate teammates. And if you can have that. Let's take one of those competitive spirit. It's like, so, you know, one of the advantages of growing up as an athlete is you learn that at a young age. You learn at a young age, especially in team sports. This is just my opinion. You know, one of the things I love about young kids getting into team sports is they have an opportunity at least to learn about, about team, first of all, learn about team effort and being part of a team and being responsible for your a part of that team you know each team member has a core responsibility and you you have to take ownership of of your part of being on that team and at a young age with young child child you know eight even down to eight years old when they start playing football and even junior jazz basketball here in utah and whatnot you learn at a very very early age what it means to be part of team and then as you grow up through, through the ranks in sports, you learn a, you just learn a lot of really powerful skill sets and attributes of success, don't you? I mean, I think yes. that's part of the key. Now, how, let's say that there's a lot of our listeners that maybe were not part of team sports growing up. Maybe they never had that experience. You know, you and I have advantage. We were part of teams. If you were part of team sports at a much higher level than I was, but I've been part of teams everywhere. I was team sports when I was young and I've been members of, of all different types of teams, my professional career, but I get, I get the power of team and I get the power of the competitive spirit as a team. 
and it's really carried me through. But I do attribute a lot of that back to my young days in team sports. So there's listeners right now that weren't in team sports. So they don't have that fundamental blueprint in their head about how it all works. What would you say to those people? How can they acquire that? Well, you can always acquire understanding how to be a good teammate. Uh, It's in your marriage. It's in your family. It's in business. It's in school. It's in life. It's in everything. Uh, You know, what can I do for you? Do I make you better on a daily basis? Um, You know, watching my mother-in-law cook and prepare dinners. When I first got married, I didn't really cook that much. And then seeing Marion do all this, I learned from her because she was so disciplined in what she was doing. And I could take it from cooking to like in, in 2010, uh, when uh, the Lakers were in the uh, NBA finals against the Celtics. And I can remember when he, Kobe Bryant, he knocked on uh, pa- uh, Paul, Paul Gasol's room after a game one night. And I remember him, you know, kind of sharing this story with me, but he was talking about how the, how the Celtics were running their pick and roll coverage, how they should attack it. So they were prepared for the next for the next day and team teamwork is maybe you're seeing something that I'm not in the workplace or at home, or maybe I'm too hard on somebody and you need to say, Hey, that's, that's, you know, going to hurt his feelings or her feelings. So it's learning a, a great teammate is also a great communicator learning uh, not only what to say, but 360 communication, you know, listening, is a communication it's part of that and and by and large people want to be listened and and heard and it's okay you know i mean if if you're the boss or i'm the boss or kobe's the boss you need your teammates i mean you can't run some now cars by yourself you need everybody doing something from a secretary you know writing notes or taking phone calls or messages or somebody breaking down film in in the film room that we give to the players and then we get in the gym with it's there's there's so much a part of that but I know for a fact that if you will if you will add a degree of detail you know master the things that take no talent both in preparation and study whatever you're doing it could be sports it could be in business but what are the key factors? Identify the key factors in winning and being successful individually and then being successful uh, successful as a, as a teammate. And you need to have your best approach on this because if, if you're lazy and you don't work hard and you cut corners, in my world, they cut you. Yeah. In your world, in the business world, somebody's going to take your job. And don't yeah. get mad. You, you, know, you know, Michael Jackson, man in the mirror. You got to look at the person in the mirror. Am I bringing the best that I can? Am I doing the best that I can? And, and, you know, whatever it so, is. But we live in a world where people do get mad. We live in a world where people do, don't do want to take personal responsibility and want to get angry and blame other things when they fall short. And I know I'm walking on a little thin line here, but whatever. I mean, it's just, I call it the way I see it. The, a lot of what's going on in the world today, I believe, it, it's not, and I'm speaking general, because there's a lot of things that contribute to the craziness going on in the world today. But one of the issues, one of the biggest issues that I see is people that do not take responsibility. And it's just, it's just a fact. I mean, come on, I, it, it's, it's a fact. There's people that just don't, take responsibility and they look for other places to blame their failures on or their shortness on or them feeling bad about something on when the reality is they just need to look in the mirror and realize if they don't up their game they're going to get cut right. and uh, is that too harsh to say because we live in a world where you know if you say stuff like that someone's going to get offended and then they you know get upset and they want to stand on some kind of weird principle to try to protect themselves. And again, I don't mean to be harsh. I don't mean to be mean need to be anything, but if we're talking about success and winning, we got to call a duck a duck, don't we? I mean, what, what are your thoughts there? 
Well, I have a lot of thoughts on this. You know, we, we live in a very sensitive society. Uh, when I played basketball in college, uh, the, the people in the stands used to call me super Jew or leave the heat. It, you know, it was okay. It wasn't derogatory. It was just, that's, they were my friends or family or fans. And I knew they were very supportive of me. So let me get uh, back to your question. In this day where everything is so polarized and we have this cancel culture that, you know, I, I, I read something the other day where this woman, she, um, she was a hairdresser. She says a salon and she put a ad in the paper that said, looking for somebody who can cut color uh, is enthusiastic. I I'm looking for a happy hairstylist. If you're that, call me. Well, people went at her and said, how can you do that? You are so discriminatory. What about the people that un are unhappy stylists? And I was like, you have got to be kidding me. I mean, people right now, uh, God bless them. They're so uber sensitive. And I know that there are real things that you have to be sensitive uh, about. And, and, you know, there's a lot of, well, how do you say, is it, a, do you say he, do you say she, do you say what? I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to fail some of those tests. But let me tell you what I, I, what I do know from my own personal experience. I understand as best I can the Black community. And I know that there's a, a lot of sadness and there's a lot of hurt because there, there, there is some systemic racism and implied bias. I think that we have to do this together. Although the Black community, the, the, the gay community, of whatever community, if you're gay, you can get married, you can have a partner, you can have children, you can have health insurance, you know, things have changed from, you know, the 70s, 80s, where, you know, people are like, you should go to jail, which is wrong. Right. Then the Black community, we've come a long way. I say we, but Black community has come a long way. We have a, a two-term African-American president in, in President Obama. We have more African-American billionaires and millionaires than ever before. Um, do I think that we've hit the mark? No, I don't. But I do think we have to work on both sides, okay? Things that you're saying. You know, sometimes when you're hopeless and helpless, everybody's different. When I was that way at six, seven, eight, nine years old, I was going, I was going to fight for every inch of trying to change because I didn't want to live the life my mother lived. Some people don't have that within them. And so they, they kind of crumple up and they don't know what to do. So everybody's different in how they react to things. Um, there has to be some change. There has to be some equality. I mean, hire somebody that doesn't look like you. I went, I'm a minority. It took me forever to do games because I was a woman, you know, college games, uh, NBA games, and it's still not broad-based. It's getting better. Mm -hmm. We're coaching in the NBA. There's nine, I think nine women as of now, maybe 10 coaching, no female head coach in 75 years. So, you know, we're not there yet, but we are trending in that, you know, in that per, uh, particular direction. Um, you know, I, I, I'm kind of fortunate because like when things like what's happening with George Floyd, that was horrendous. I mean, that's flat out murder. And, and that made me sick. But what I do say in, in, in talking like to Ice Cube and, and some of the, you know, who I work for and guys that I've been very close, you know, in the NBA, you know, African-Americans, I'm like, tell me, talk to me, tell me what you need. We can't cancel everything that's happened. And I ask hard questions too. Like when we're dealing with slavery, I asked one of my friends, I said, how many African-Americans own slaves? I said, just tell me, it's fact finding from over 200,000 African-Americans own slaves. That's not cool either. Right now in places in Africa, there are slave child trafficking, human rights violations in China for what they're doing. And you know, so right now, I think we have to identify what is it that we need to do? How can we help together? So, so yeah, I mean, I, I, it's interesting how this conversation is going. By the way, we're listening to Nancy Lieberman. And uh, one of the things in her accomplishments is not only 
of who's who of basketball and basketball hall of fame, uh, professional basketball player herself, uh, herself, as well as a coach. Um, lots of accomplishments in the game, in, in the world of basketball, but also uh, the Nancy Lieberman Foundation uh, was organized back in 1980. When, when, when was that first? We started in 1980, but we became a 501c3 in 2008. 2008 is when it became official, and you've been building uh, dream courts all over the country and in different uh, some different countries. Uh, incredible foundation that my foundation has gotten involved with, the uh, uh, McCabe Avenue Foundation, because we have similar interests. We want to go to the inner cities of the world and we want to uh, give back to the communities with our children, you know, the, with our uh, uh, young girls and boys in our communities and give them places where they can learn, places where they can learn things like teamwork and principle, different things. And Nancy, you've done such an amazing job worldwide at giving back to our communities through the Nancy Lieberman Foundation. And y'all uh, haven't heard of that, just again, Google Nancy Foundation and take a look at the Dream Court activities and stuff that's going on. The reason that I bring all that up and interject right now in your conversation, bring all that up is because doing the foundation and the foundation is one of the main things that you do now, which is amazing because you're incredibly busy with your career still, but you have the time and I don't know how you do it, but you do this, this Lieberman Foundation thing and it's amazing the work that you're doing but it's put it's put you into a unique situation where you are being asked on a continual basis to to step in and help with the problems of our society step in and help lawmakers step in and help lobbyists and people that can make a difference and in the pre-show you were telling me a little bit about some of those experiences and the reason I want to bring that up right now is when you start talking about, you know, problems in our community and, you know, the the uh, African American situation and, and you, you know all all of this stuff and you bring it up the, the, again in our sensitive world, here's this white Jewish lady talking about black guys and she's supposed to know what she's talking about. That's what people think today. They're looking at you saying, "Who are you to talk about that?" Well, I'm telling you who you who she is to talk about that. She's lived in that world, and she, and you are doing incredible work to 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 actually maybe try to help the situation. I want to make sure our listeners know that about you. And with that in mind, I'd like to continue the conversation. You know, and and I think what you're alluding to is you know all these things are important. We do need to be sensitive. We do do need to listen to what people's pains are. We need to, you know, you know, we need to be in this together. And this is part of what this show is all about. Part of what the relationship marketing show is all about is people coming together. Now we talk about it in a business setting a lot, but let's face it, society in general, humanity in general, the core goal is humanity coming together. That's the core goal of life. In my opinion, that is the core goal of life is that humanity has to figure out how to come together. And the more we do come together, the more success we have. Is is that true statement or am I some utopian crazy guy? Uh, no, you're, you're, you're spot on. We do have to come together. But as I've told some people before, um, it's not my job to parent your children, okay? It's my job to be a good role model, to be a good citizen, to, to care. Uh, to, to leave it love and kindness, but whether it's the black community, the Asian community, Christian community, Jews, Latinos, Hispanics, uh, Muslims, it's your job to parent your kids. And if you don't do a good job in parenting your kids, they're not going to be disciplined or not, they're not going to have core values of what they're going to need when they are not with you. And I think that's really important. I think you have to have ownership of that. And if, it doesn't matter if it's a white kid, black kid, whatever. I mean, if these kids are running wild in the street and, and they're robbing and stealing and, uh, you know, mugging. And I, I could have been doing that growing up in New York. But, you know, I was lucky. Uh, what I didn't have at home, as you all well know, growing up in New York, 
I was championed by the black community. So people go, you know, what the hell does she know? Well, I know this, I know love is love is love. And I know loyalty and I know kindness. And I know that the guys that were protecting me, they didn't tolerate me. They celebrated me at Rutger Park in New York, in, in Brooklyn or wherever I was playing ball. The black community was who was advancing my thoughts that I could be a champion that I could be an Olympian, that I could be a professional athlete, that, you know, I mean, and you know, Ali, Muhammad Ali was my hero, my lifelong friend. And, and he told me at 19, you know, respect everybody, but fear nobody. But he used to tell me, because he knew I didn't have a father. Ali used to say to me, Nancy, you have to be disciplined. You have to be different. You have to set an example. Don't be afraid to try. There's two people in life. There's givers and there's takers. I need you to be the giver. Help somebody if they don't have, you know, lift when you rise and be supportive. So, I mean, I feel comfortable being on a lot of, uh, you know, like right now I'm on uh, all this policing co uh, coalition with state, local and national. Um, you know, we're talking about, you know, mass incarceration, criminalization, uh, safe and just police reform, community control, improving police department policies, you know, everything from qualified immunity to no-knock warrants to, to chokeholds to the 1033 program, second level prison uh, look-in at a federal level. So it's really important to me with this group of people to try and start putting some legislation together that hopefully will be then a part of institutions this into law. I, I do think that there has to be some language uh, changes in, in how we police, but I'm telling you, and this is my experience, you can say I'm, you know, just an old white woman and, and, and I'll call BS on you, but <laughs> it, the thing is, is 99% of police officers, male or female, they're good people. Are there rogue people? Heck yeah. Are there bad human beings that are trying to rob and murder and, and rape? Yeah, there's some bad people out there too. And if you do things like that, there's a price to pay if you get caught. Now, when you do get caught and you do serve your time, now we have to figure out how to reincorporate you into America. We have to find jobs for you. We have to help you. I mean, I, I think those are the things like, like the first act, the first step act that President uh, Trump signed. That first step act, it takes people who are in prisoners and allows them to get reoriented back into society like Alice Johnson, who was in prison for 21 years. You know, she had mid to high level drug related crimes. She did her time. And I was really proud that her sentence was commuted. And I've gotten to know her really well. And she told me as a 63 year old, you know, black woman, she goes, you have no clue what I went through, but she says, I caused my own pain. So we all have to be, you said it earlier, you have to be accountable, you have to be responsible and you have to be dependable. And that's in any walk of life. It doesn't mean we can't be, we should be devoid of empathy, of caring. I care about the black community. I don't want any of my brothers and sisters to be to be shot or hurt or uh, well, falsely imprisoned. Yeah. So what's interesting, you and I have similar backgrounds where the the uh, black communities embraced us mm -hmm. as white people. I mean, I lived in Baltimore, Maryland for a period of time uh, in an all black community and only white guy on the block and was not accepted at first until one guy, one African-American gentleman that was a couple of years younger than me, took me in as a friend. And uh, because he took me in as a friend, others on that block took me in as friends. And over time, I became part of the community and I became accepted in that community. So for the first time in my life, at the time I was like 20, 20 years old, first time in my life, I felt at least for a period of time, I felt what it was what it was like to be the minority. And I also felt what it was like to be accepted by a different race and brought into that community, protected in that community, just like you in Brooklyn, you know, going and playing basketball with the African American uh, male players who didn't want you on the court at first, laughed at you, 
told the little girl to go home, but you kept showing up. I love your story about how, you know, you learned foul shots because the only way to get selected on teams, you had to make the foul shot to be on the team. And so you got real good at foul shooting so you could get on a, a pickup game team. And then you learned your craft with some of the best players on the street. So we have similar backgrounds and similar stories about different races coming together with a commonality. In your case, it was basketball. You know, in my case, it was just it was just living in the neighborhood and and loving on people, you know, being part of people's lives. And you mentioned it earlier in the show. It really does. I, I don't know about being politically correct. I don't know all the rights and wrongs. I don't know what a 1033 is. I don't know what all of this language, the political language is, but I know right and I know wrong and I know kindness and I know the importance of love and I know that respect. love really, and respect, respect aren't those the things that's going to solve these problems. There's key things you're talking about there. Love, respect honor, responsibility. There's key words there. There's key attributes there that have to be part of the discussion. You, you, you cannot solve the problems of our world today without personal accountability. I, I, I agree with you on all of that. And, you know, that was one of the things that really drew me to, you know, you and your family and, and your, you know, Whitney and, and the McCabe Avenue Foundation you know, if we're really good partners in this world, and, and, you know, our time here on earth is very short. As you know, Ali says, you know, service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. Our room here on earth, you know, is not going to be that long. So what are we doing for other people? So, you know, what you were doing with your foundation is you're really advancing uh, uh, Black pathways, okay? I think that's really important to, to, for people to have jobs and for people to have opportunities. Uh, we also have to amplify uh, young people and, and have diversity around us, which you have done in the, the, the time that we've known each other. Um, you know, with, with my charity, what we're doing, we're creating opportunity zones and we're engaging education, uh, health, uh, college scholarships through the Dream Court program. At first, I mean, I'd like to look you in the eye and say, oh yeah, I knew we were going to do all this. I had no clue. You know what? The Dream Court was a safe place for me and you because you could no longer make fun of us and tell us what we weren't. And it, it brought people together. But then as we have evolved with Dream Court since, since 2010, we have a partnership with the United States Tennis Association. You can no longer tell a little white girl, a little black kid, no, no, you need to play football or basketball. No, no, don't tell these kids what they can play. Give them an opportunity to figure out what it is that they like and what they care about. So the dream court, we have tennis and we have all these, you know, different different people, religions, color, ages playing, you know, tennis now through the USDA programming. STEM, we have STEM now on every dream court that we open. We, o we also have uh, civic education and it's an engagement. We want, if you live in Baltimore, you need to know about the history of your city. We want to introduce you and let you shadow your, your community organizer, your local rep, your um, councilman or woman, maybe your mayor. And get to go, oh, wow, I didn't even know, I've never been in the courthouses. You know, we want to open up your mind to uh, what it is you want to be. Um, so we're, we want to go into urban areas and we want to be able to bring these type of programs. Um, we're starting a, a financial, uh, I did a financial liter literacy program for six years all over the country. We're now incorporating financial literacy why shouldn't an eight, nine, or 10 year old understand the value of money, even though you might not have money? But let's start educating you. That's like somebody telling me at 15, no, you can't make this team because you know, you're too young. Stop telling me what I can't be and start telling me what I can be. I need you to know that money is valuable, that one day you're gonna pay taxes, that you know, you're gonna be offered a job one day as a 
is it right for you? Is it not? Hey, you know what a budget is? Uh, so we, we're bringing programming through this healthy vehicle called a dream court where, where dreams are formed, where friendships will be lifelong. And right now, 80% of young people being hired by Fortune 500 companies are kids that played high school uh, before they got to high school. Because you can yell at me, you can scream at me, you, you can, I can win, I can lose. I'm wired for strategy. My DNA is to get better and to be a good teammate. That's what corporate America, that's what local businesses need. They need people who are just going to run through the tape and just not quit the minute there's adversity. These are the people that we want to associate ourselves with. So we are listening to the one and only Nancy Lieberman. Uh, you got to Google her. It's just amazing to sit and listen to you. She's got a couple of books out. Uh, Lady Magic, it's the autobiography, that your autobiography. Uh, first book that you had titled Basketball My Way, which I highly recommend. That was written many years ago. Uh, so, you know, if you go to, to Nancy Lieberman, Google, you're going to find out all those things. But again, one of the greatest accomplishments, I believe, is your Nancy Lieberman Foundation and all the work that you're doing there. I got to tell you, Nancy, it's amazing to listen to you. And I, I'm sitting there as you're talking about all these things you're involved with. <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking this lady is a sports commentator, which probably by itself is very consuming you got to know all kinds of stuff to commentate the sports it's only 82 games just 82 <laughs> games where you got to be prepared for every game and prepared know all the players <laughs> hair, know, know, stats, know everything else and you 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 hold that down and then you take take on basketball coaching jobs at the same time and you run the nancy lieberman foundation and you're involved with writing bills and working with uh Congress people and, and politicians to try to make a difference and a change. And on top of all of that, in my opinion, as I've seen so many influencers in the world, inspirational influencers in the world, you're one of the top inspirational influencers on the planet right now. When you listen to a speech that Nancy gives, you get you get inspired, like you like you get inspired. In fact, Nancy recently spoke at uh, just just finished up our relationship marketing grant summit that we did here at Sent Out Cards, and you were one of our featured speakers there. And uh, just huge accolades to you for the way in which you inspired our audience. Uh, again, with just fundamental principle kind of stuff, but you do it in such a way that make people believe they can. They can, they can live that way. You, you have a way of making people believe that they can actually live the way you do, that they can accomplish the way that you do. And I just got to take a hat off to you for that. It's a gift. And it's a gift. And God gave you that gift. And you're, you're, you're doing great things with it. So I just applaud you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I feel humbled. Um, I feel grateful. Um, every step of what I do, I want to do to the best of my ability. I want to have intentional greatness no matter what I do. And, you know, as we continue, you know, to march forward, and I know we were just talking about all those political things, you know, one of the things that I would do, and you didn't ask me this, is whatever happens on November 3rd, I, I would get a group of people to march in Washington and say, I will never vote for another politician if we don't have term limits, and if we don't have a salary cap on election spending. We're raising billions and billions. Like, you know, I don't know about you, but in my world, we have a luxury tax. Mm -hmm. If you go over the salary cap, you have to pay an additional amount of money because, you know, you, you circumvented the cap and that goes to teams um, that are small market teams. Well, why don't we put a salary cap on all the uh, the competing candidates and say, okay, you want you want to spend fifty million dollars? Okay, you start spending three hundred and fifty million or a billion dollars. That money then goes. How about feeding the poor? Mm -hmm. How about you know taking that money into the black community? Let's take away red line districts. Let's help people get mortgages 
on their home so they can have their first home, which builds their self-esteem and confidence. Let's help them build businesses with some of that money. But rich people, we are giving rich people money to compete. Hey, if I lose, nobody gives me a check for, for $10 million. Hey, it was a nice try. I want to reimburse you for what you laid out. <laughs> Sorry, if you want to get elected, it's a competition. Yeah. And you don't get rewarded with the winner doesn't get to reimburse you for the money you laid out to win. It's it's the price you pay for competition. That's what I would do. I would I would have a group. I'd have send out cards, writing cards to the politicians <laughs> yeah. and just saying, look, there has to be term limits and there has to be election cap spending. Because well, I, we could, I couldn't agree with you more. And I, I, I love your passion and your courage to say exactly what you think in this hypersensitive world. There's going to be 9,000 opinions about everything that <laughs> I and you said today. And, and we get that. And you know what? And that's okay. It, we live in a world of diversity and people have their different ideas and opinions about things. And that's okay. It's, that's part of what diversity is. It's, and it's us coming together. But what you're talking about, Nancy, is just fundamental principles. These are common yes. sense things that you're bringing up. They're just common sense things you know, it, live by the same rules that you impose on others. Uh, to me, that's, that's, I learned that in kindergarten. You know, why should anybody be exempt from that, you know? And so it's, it's just, it's, it's just, I think it's an important conversation. Again, it comes back to, if we want the human race to come together, and some of you may be right saying, what does all this conversation have to do with re relationship marketing? Well, it has everything to do with relationship marketing. Absolutely. Because what we're talking about are principles. We're talking about principles of human beings respecting each other, regardless of difference, respecting each other and coming together. How about this? Regardless of what happens on November 4th, is it 4th or 3rd? What is it? No matter, regardless of what happens on November 3rd, regardless, there comes a point where regardless of what your beliefs and political sides are, regardless of what happens on number third, the core thought process needs to be, we've got to come together, period. Regardless of who gets elected, we have to come together as a human race. And we do live in the greatest country in the world. And we got to come together because we have to be an example to the rest of the world. It st doesn't take away anything from the rest of the world. It's just that we have certain things that have been provided for us here in the United States of America over the years, the freedoms that we've been provided, all the stuff that's been provided to us, the resources that we have and education that we have and all the wonderful things that we have in this country has, has allowed us to be in a position where we can be the, the, the example. But we got to come together to be that example. We can't be part and be that example. We have to come together, and it's the great it's the great test. I mean, you know, we say all the time on here, the importance of bringing the human race together, different races, ethnicity, religious backgrounds, et cetera, all coming together with a common theme. Listen, the only common theme that we all have is the desire to love and be loved. That's it. So sad. That's all any of us have. And if we could just figure that out and come together, even political views. Okay, think whatever political views you want, but understand there's gonna be an opposite side to that. And that's just the way it is. And you're not gonna change it. You're not gonna change the way somebody believes or thinks or feels. The key is to come together in your commonalities, which is the desire to love and be loved and be respected. That's it. It's, oh, it's you're, you're, you're spot on with that. And, and again, I keep, quoting my man, uh, Muhammad Ali, but for years he said to me, Nancy, if you're racist, you're racist. And I went, I, what do you mean? He goes, if somebody is racist against the black community and somebody in the black community is racist or anti-Semitic or whatever, you're racist. Yeah. So stop doing that. Stop being racist. Just yeah. let's accept people where they are. Like you've said, I've said, let's try to help each other. I honestly, you know, like somebody was talking to me the other day and I said, I'm sorry, I don't have white guilt. I'm really sorry. Mm. I, I, I don't. 
Yeah. Because, am I privileged on some level? Yeah, well, so is LeBron James and That's so right. is Beyonce. Yeah. And, and yep. so, you know, anybody who's been successful at anything has some level of privilege, you know? Um, and it, it crosses, you know, go look at go look at some of the rich people in the world. It's a cross section of, it's not just people here in America. So I, I wanna help people. Um, like I said, I, I'm, I have no guilt because you know you, you are going back to McCabe Avenue and you're trying to help people in a community that changed your life. I'm trying to go back. You know, we've donated a close to $7 million cold hard cash since uh, 2010 to sending uh, 70 you know, high school seniors under, underprivileged to college. We now want to send uh, some girls to historically black uh, colleges so they have some pride in those colleges. We're just trying to do our fair, our fair part. And I think we all have to. And uh, if there's one takeaway from what we're doing, you're working shoulder to shoulder with people that might not think like you. It's okay, I'm a Yankee fan. So I know a lot of people who don't like me. I have Yankee mats in my cars and people are like, I'm not parking your car. I said, so I look at the guy and I go, do you like the Cowboys? Because I live in Dallas. And he goes, I love the Cowboys. I said, good. They hate you too now. Park my car. <laughs> because if you won, if you've been successful, LeBron James is amazing. There's haters out there. Michael Jordan it was phen phenomenal. You know, this generation now, because of the last dance, had a chance to see what his commitment to this sport was and to this world was. And there's amazing people out there. I and mean, Michael Jordan just committed a hundred million dollars, you know, uh, to, to black charities. And mm -hmm. there's so many people pulling yeah. together. Yeah. No so question. we shouldn't be uh, robbing and looting. And look, I understand that sometimes it, this type of stuff gives Sometimes it gives bad people a chance to do bad things. Yeah, yeah. But by and large, I think there's great people in the black community. There's really great people in the white community, the Latino community. I love my friends. I love them, the ones that don't look like me. Yeah. I'm super cool with that. So that's just where I stand on these issues. I have no guilt, but I have a lot of love. Well, there you have it, my friends, the one and only Nancy Lieberman. I encourage you to get on, uh, learn about the Nancy Lieberman Foundation and the work that's being done there. And our, our own foundation, the McCabe Avenue Foundation, is teaming up with Nancy Lieberman Foundation to give back to our communities around the world, uh, try to make a difference. Not try, we are making a difference in the lives of these young kids of all ethnic backgrounds, all different races. And it's just a lot of fun to see that happen. And I've just been so inspired by your accomplishments with your foundation. That's why we joined with you. And again, uh, special thanks to you for being on a very unique show. This was a very, very unique podcast for the Marketing Podcast Show. But I sure love having these every once in a while. We, we did it. We had the courage to talk about some tough things today. Not sure how it'll be received, but you know, it came from the heart of both of us. And at the end of the day, we just have a desire to love and be loved with everybody in the world. And that's what we want to accomplish, period. And so hopefully we can just keep working at it. Well, God bless you and everybody to send out cards and just again for people just being open minded to hearing things that might or might not be as comfortable um, for you. And, and let's just help people. Absolutely. Like you said, plain and simple. So thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Thank you, Nancy. Appreciate you very much. Uh, thank everybody for tuning in today. Keep on joining us every single week. We're going to bring it. Like Nancy says, we're going to keep bringing it. So take everybody. Have a blessed day. Remember, go out there and be kind to people. Be nice to people. Take responsibility for doing good in the world. And uh, we'll see you later. That's now. Have enjoyed this episode of the Relationship Marketing Podcast with Cody B. Be sure to subscribe to the show and leave a review so that together we can get this message, The Power of Human Connection, out to the world. You can find Cody's new book, The Power of Human Connection, on Amazon or the Send Out Cards gift store.